Last video, I showed you China's toughest exam, the Gaokao, and today I'd like to take a look at how it compares to another notoriously difficult exam, India's JEE Advanced. I'll show you some of the toughest problems from each exam, but first let's think about how they compare overall. Both exams are taken to gain entrance into university. China's Gaokao is sat by around 10 million students each year, and to be eligible, a student needs to have finished high school. India's JEE Advanced is sat by only around 200,000 students, but to get there, you need to have already passed through one round of exams, the JEE mains, and made the cutoff. So only the best of the best students are able to sit the exam. The JEE is an engineering exam and assesses physics, chemistry, and math allowing entry into the Indian Institutes of Technology, such as IIT Bombay with a world ranking of 172 and IIT Delhi with a world ranking of 193. The Gaokao has a broader scope covering the science subjects as electives as well as languages and essays. Doing well could allow entry into some of the world's best universities, including Tsinghua with a world ranking of 15 and Peking at 23. Preparation for both the exams is intense and starts years before the exam, with both countries having a lot of private exam coaching. And China has Mao Tan Chang, a town almost entirely dedicated to helping students score highly. I would say the stakes seem a little higher in China just because if you fail the exam, your only options are to either give up or wait an entire year to try again. Whereas in India, there are a few other pathways and other exams such as UPSC or NET. So let's see how the actual questions compare. In my last Gaokao video, I showed a math question that many of you said was a bit on the easy side. So today I've picked a harder one. This is from the 2016 Jiangsu exam. As shown below, there is a straight line L given by this equation and a parabola C given by this equation. Part one asks, if line L passes the focus of the parabola, then what is the equation of the parabola? So they're asking you really to find out what P is. And that determines the shape. Somewhere in here would be the focus of the parabola. And you can see in the solutions that I've written out that for this first part, it would be handy to know how to find the focus of the parabola. And if you did, you'd be able to find the focus for our one to be P over two, zero. Then put that point into the line since we know the line passes it. And you'll find that P is equal to four. So you get your parabola equation. Part two is more difficult. It says there are two points, P and Q, on our parabola, such that P and Q are symmetric with respect to line L. A, prove that the midpoint of the line segment PQ is this. Pause the video here and try it yourself to really see how tricky this question can be. I interpret points P and Q to look something like this, and a bit of information we know is that a line between P and Q must be perpendicular to L since the points are symmetric. From the equation of the line L, we can work out its gradient is one. So the gradient of line PQ must be equal to minus one. That's the first brainwave that you need to get going. You can write the gradient of PQ from the equation you know about the parabola and simplify it down into this form where y1 plus y2 over 2 is equal to minus p. Now that in fact will be the y component of the midpoint. And now we just need to find the x component. To do that, you'll need the second brain wave, which is to remember that the midpoint of pq must lie on the line L since p and q are an equal distance from L. Use the equation of line L put in the coordinates of the midpoint, and then you will find the x component of the midpoint to be two minus p, giving the final answer to that part of the question. 
Part B, I stared at for a long time before I was able to figure out what you meant to do. They're asking, what is the range of possible values of P? P appears in this midpoint of PQ, and so there must only be a range of values for P for which this is possible. The way that I ended up doing this was to write an equation of the line PQ, which is something we hadn't done yet, although we do already know the gradient, and we know it passes through the midpoint, so we're able to write this equation as y is minus x plus 2 minus 2p. Then combine this linear equation with the equation of the parabola that we were given, y squared is 2px. That will ultimately give you this quadratic equation here, which is a relationship between y and the parameter p. To find the range of values of p, we're going to be using the discriminant. The discriminant of a quadratic in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, would be b squared minus 4ac. And if that discriminant is bigger than zero, there will be two real and unequal roots or solutions. And that is the situation that we want. So we work out our discriminant, set it as being larger than zero, and find that p would have to be between zero and four thirds. I found that one really challenging. Not so much that any of the individual steps were too hard to do, but it took a lot of thought to think of a method you would use to get to the answer. A tough JEE advanced question that I found on a similar topic is this one here from the 2018 paper two. Let T be the line passing through the points P and Q. Let F1 be the set of all pairs of circles, S1 and S2, such that T is tangent to S1 at P and tangent to S2 at Q, and also such that S1 and S2 touch each other at a point, say M. Let E1 be the set representing the locus of M as the pair S1, S2 varies in F1. Let the set of all straight line segments joining a pair of distinct points of E1 and passing through the point R be F2. Let E2 be the set of the midpoints of the line segments in the set F2. Then, which of the following statements are true? Now, this question is completely out of control and seems to get worse with every single sentence. Again, pause here to have a little try yourself. It sounds impossible to understand when you read it, but I think something like this is going on. We have our points P and Q, and circles which are tangent at those points. These circles can change in size, but they will always touch each other at this point M. Here it's essential to know what a locus is, and it is the set of all points whose location satisfies a given condition. So we're asked to find E1, which is the locus of M, and that's sort of all the places that M could possibly be. You first need to notice that the angle between P, M and Q will be 90 degrees. And that gives you the condition you need to work out all the places M could be. Because with that condition, we know that the gradient of P to M times the gradient of QM would be equal to minus one. These lines are perpendicular. Plug in your points and you'll work out this equation, which is E1, all the possible spots where M could be. Now E1 itself is actually a circle. And to round it out here, we could eliminate A as an answer. A is actually claiming that point P lies in E1. But if M was over here where P is, then the size of this circle would be radius zero. And this one would have to be a straight line. So we can say that both P and Q are not actually possible locations for M and are therefore not included in E1. So the circle, I guess, is open at those points. 
The next thing that happens is that we start to draw chords in this circle of E1 and these chords pass through the point 1, 1. Now the midpoints of these chords form their own locus called E2. E2 will be all the possible midpoints. To get E2, notice that the chord will be perpendicular to a line from the center to the midpoint. And so if we call our midpoint H, K, then the condition for E2 will be that those two lines were perpendicular. Their gradients will multiply to be minus one. Rearrange that and you have the equation for E2. You'd think that finding E1 and E2 would be all the hard work done because that was pretty tricky. But then the exam gets downright nasty by trying to trick you with some of the multi-choice answers. They say the point four fifths and seven fifths does not lie in E2. Now those coordinates will satisfy the equation for E2. So it looks like that point is in E2, but you're supposed to notice that that point they gave you is actually the midpoint of a chord that would have passed through P. And since P isn't actually in E1, then neither is the chord that would originate from it. So B is an answer because that point will not be in E2. This was my working to figure that out. I found the equation of a line through the point they gave you and 1, 1. That was the equation there. And then I found the equation of a line that would pass through P and 1, 1. And it was the same equation. For C, you can find that it is not an answer because this point does not satisfy the equation of E2. And for D, you will find that it is also an answer because this point does not satisfy the equation of E1. So that's been a look at a question from each paper. In this case, I did find the JEE question harder since the geometry was more difficult to understand. But of course, you can't judge a whole exam on one question. There will be questions that are harder and easier than these ones. So the battle is still on. In fact, it was more difficult for me to comb through the Gaokao questions since it's difficult to get translations. So if you know of a particularly tricky one, then send in a link to it. And same with any JEE questions. I'd enjoy taking a look at which ones you found the hardest. I've also seen comments from other countries, including Turkey, Korea and Brazil, and I hope to cover your exams in the future. It's worth remembering here that the Gaokao and the JEE are measuring different groups of students for different reasons on different topics. And the difficulty of questions within an exam, I find is often more determined by the kind of preparation you've done and perhaps how similar the questions are to those of previous years. Clearly, a lot of hard work goes into preparing for either of these exams. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for enabling me to make these videos. And a special shout out to today's Patreon cat of the day, Glacier. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. I hope to see you next time.